hello everyone it's good to see you all in the new video and this video is going to be on slenderness ratio and the concept of buckling so without further ado let's dive in what would be the better way to explain a slenderness ratio definitely with an example right imagine you have a long thin straw Place it vertically on the table and try to hold it by placing your finger on the top as shown in this particular figure. The straw will stand upright, right? It is expected to stand. Nothing, nothing magical in it. Now, try to put a slight pressure on the straw by pressing your finger on the top. Obviously, still it stands. Now, keep on increasing the pressure. If you see, at some point of time, this particular straw will suddenly bend or wobble in the middle. This particular behavior is called buckling. And this applies to all our structural members. Buckling is a phenomenon where our member suddenly fails by bending on the sideways, either like uh, along this side or along this side, along its longitudinal axis. Now we consider like we are somewhere near to understand what is happening. So let's proceed. Let us consider an example where like we are going to compare a paper straw and a spaghetti. So let me ask a question. Comparing these two materials, which will undergo buckling first? Nothing to think much, right? As it is evident, the spaghetti noodle will buckle first. But why? Because it is slender. Interesting. How do we declare a member as slender? Before moving to it, let's consider one more example. Previously, the comparison is between two different materials, paper straw and spaghetti. Now, let's compare a paper straw of different lengths. Say the first one is of 10 cm long and the second one is 20 cm long. In this case, which one will buckle first? Obviously, the longer one. Reason, again, slenderness. If you look into these two examples in deep, we get to know how buckling works. In the first example, we compare two different materials, a paper straw and a spaghetti. The materials are different, right? Like it is hard to compare. So, for, for an argument's sake, let us consider same material. Uh, so, like I am switching paper straws with a pasta straw. Now, we are going to compare a pasta straw with a spaghetti. Both the materials are same. So, in this case, which one will buckle first? Obviously, the noodle. The main reason would be the cross-sectional properties, especially radius of gyration. So, a radius of gyration. What is it? It is nothing but a measure of how far the material from the centroid. So what is the evident proof that radius of gyration is responsible for this buckling behavior? To answer this, let us have an another example. Let's consider two pasta straws of same length and same cross-sectional area. But the distribution of material is going to be different for both the straws. For one straw, we are going to arrange the material as close as possible to the centroid. And for the other straw, we are going to place the material as far as away from the centroid. So in this case, let us consider straw 1 has radius of gyration more than straw 2. In this case, which one will buckle first? Obviously, straw 1. It is because it has more radius of gyration then straw 2. So to evidently prove this, it is considered up this particular table which shows the sectional properties of a circular hollow section. So if you see for example a 40 mm dia bar, there are different thicknesses 2.9, 3.2 and 4. So like consider even though here like we are not going to take uh, the same cross sectional area material, we are uh, comparing sections of different cross-sectional area even though the cross-sectional area is more for 4 mm thick tube 
say like 5.56 comparing to a 2.9 mm thick tube which is just 4.13 cm square irrespective of these cross sectional increase the radius of gyration of the lighter tube is more than the thicker tube which is evident that further away the materials from the centroid the radius of gyration would be more so that's all about our first example comparing a straw with a spaghetti noodle now let's move on to the second example where we compare two paper straws of different length getting to the first question which one will buckle first obviously the 20 cm long paper straw will buckle first it is because the longer one is slender and subjected to wobble in the middle so easily but why this happens as we mentioned earlier buckling is simply bending sideways right since we have more length we have more room for bending in the longer straw than the shorter one so on the whole longer the member it is more prone to buckling being this said let's move on to this slenderness ratio it is nothing but the measure of slenderness of a particular member it is dimensionless and it goes by the ratio of effective length of a member to its radius of gyration it is simple right so more the length more would be the slenderness ratio so from this equation it is very much evident that if the member length is more then obviously the member will be more slender more slender means more buckling and if the radius of gyration for particular member is high then it will bring down the slenderness ratio of that particular member so in the tabular form where we where we have seen here if we consider a section 40 mm dia of 4 mm and 2.9 mm this particular 2.9 mm tube will withstand more buckling than a 4 mm tube simply because of radius of gyration and finally how would you improve the member strength against buckling from the slenderness ratio equation it is evident that in order to improve the member strength against buckling that is in order to reduce the slenderness ratio either we have to reduce the length of a member or increase the radius of gyration of the member and that's all for this video and we'll catch you guys with a more interesting and intriguing topic we'll catch you guys with a more interesting and intriguing topic as always thank you